today. I'm author CJ Peterson, my co-host over here. Yeah, I'm pointing in their direction now. Is author Michael Scott Clifton. Welcome to Book World, The Great Escape. Today, we're going to be talking about the writer's purpose, which is to entertain, which is pretty much in our wheelhouse as fiction writers. So, Mike, when you think about it, what comes to mind? On entertain, uh, well, most people read fiction to escape. Um, they read to be entertained. And uh, escaping to a make-believe world, regardless of genre, whether it's a mystery, a thriller, a fantasy, a science fiction, uh, romance, obviously, is big. But that's why people read fiction books, um, is to, to escape, to be entertained. And sometimes books are humorous, you know, and they have a great deal of humor in it. And, uh, you know, laughter is, is, you know, the old adage is laughter is the best medicine. It makes you feel better. So I think that the most successful authors, again, we're speaking about it, the fiction world now, uh, are those who are very good at that, CJ, about entertaining their readers. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And grabbing a hold of them, keeping a hold of them. Right. Uh, before we dive full heart wholeheartedly into it, um, starting next week, thanks to a scheduling conflict of my my issue um, regarding school, we're going to be moving Book World to 4 p.m. Central Time. So those listening, those watching, please make sure to adjust your time calendars to 4 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, how was your week, Mike? We've had a busy week. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, the week after, mm -hmm. well, week after, week and a half after Christmas, you know, all the things you did to get ready for Christmas, you're having to go back and put up and get back to normal and uh, get back into the swing of, you know, normal life. And um, and so it's, uh, you know, we've been probably busier since New Year's than we did before New Year's. So, you know, uh, there are a lot, of, you know, with everybody, normal life, when the new year rolls around, there's so many things that you have to either renew or take care of for the coming year. And of course, again, you're having to put up, uh, you know, get past Christmas and have, you know, everything put back up and get back into a normal routine. However, one defines normal. And so uh, we've had a real busy week and, uh, um, and it's not over yet. It's only halfway through. Still got a lot to do this week. Uh, yeah, you have something going on on Friday. What is that? <laughs> so um, I have was nominated, and I will by the Chapel Hill Independent School District Hall of Fame committee to be uh, among three of their inaugural Hall of Fame members, Yay. and and. Uh, and so we will have the initial induction this Friday at 5.30 at the school at halftime of the, uh, actually between the girls varsity game and the boys varsity basketball game, all of the uh, Hall of Fame members, there are three, Linda Alston, myself and Melissa Bratton uh, will be recognized at halftime of the uh, basketball game. And then before that, we have a dinner and recognition uh, that'll be also held at the school. And uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm real honored by it. I spent all 38 of my years in public education at Chapel Hill and uh, never wanted to go anyplace else. And uh, I love the school district and the people there. And it's been my great pleasure to be able to see this, the school grow and uh, and go from a, a very tiny little K-8 school to over a high school with over a thousand students now, K through 12. Nice. And and um, and most of all, you know, as as both a coach, a teacher, and as administrator, which is my roles were my roles at Chapel Hill. I've seen hundreds and thousands. I've seen thousands. I've had impact, hopefully in a positive way, with thousands of kids that have gone through the doors at Chapel Hill and graduated and. Uh, and very honored to be honored by the uh, Hall of Fame committee uh, at Chapel Hill. So uh, looking forward to that, although I will tell you I'm a little nervous because I'm not 
not the most comfortable person in front of a bunch of people, but I'll try to slip through it. You know, sometimes I wonder if it has something to do with our height because you're tall. I'm like 5'11". So it's when you're in front of people, like we are in front of people, like we stand out in a cloud and a crowd. So yeah. sometimes that makes you feel a little self-conscious and awkward. So I get it. Uh, George Smook says, hi, CJ, Mike. Hello. So, George. Um, so my week has been fun. Um, we have put all of Christmas away. Um, but we're gearing up for college, which is where we realized the scheduling mishap. Because <laughs> it's hard for me to schedule classes when I'm supposed to be live on a podcast. So that's the reason for the schedule change to four o'clock next Wednesday. So again, I own that. Um, Mike is being very gracious and being flexible. So hopefully you all will join in on that and be flexible with us. Um, we will still be on Wednesdays, but we're going to be Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we got our schedules up and running, which was took a little finagling to, thanks to our daughter for figuring it all out. But we've got it all done, and our first semester is scheduled and ready to go. So we're super excited. I will be doing forensics investigation and psychology. You're going to be my majors. So as I told your wife, <laughs> nothing else. I'll have great cannon fodder for being an yeah, author. So lots of material to learn. So definitely um, looking forward to it. So speaking of being an author, material to learn, we're going to be talking today about the writer's purpose, which is to entertain. Um, when we go to look at entertaining, entertaining texts can be happy, sad, or even spooky, but their primary purpose is to draw the reader into the story. You have to be really good at spinning a tale enough to not just tuck them in the beginning, but to keep them throughout the entire storyline. Uh, the stories will make you laugh, hold the audience's attention, keep a reader in suspense. Uh, it's used to show theme, event, or story for enjoyment. George says, I want to invite all authors to, enjoy, to join on Facebook, San Leone Bay Area Authors. Um, so go ahead and join that group. I'm part of that group. So it looks like it's going to be a fun bunch. Um, so for entertaining, you know, it's used to show a theme, event, a story for enjoyment. Um, readers' expectations. And this is where it kind of differs a little bit from, say, nonfiction, because nonfiction, they're going to usually get information. When it comes to readers' expectations for entertaining, they expect action, emotion, a world filled with events that couldn't possibly happen in their lives, or they may. Uh, they want characters that they can identify with, that they can pretend to be. They want to hold the character. They want bold characters who act in a way, in ways the reader can only imagine trying. That's kind of um, the basic idea of fiction. A lot of times, you know what I mean. And the genre that readers um, are familiar with or that they like is important to reader expectations as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you're writing in the romance genre, then obviously there needs to be romance. Mm -hmm. um, if you're writing in science fiction genre, then obviously you need uh, a science, you need science fiction, you know, uh, filled with, you know, machines or technology or inventions or, uh, uh, even, you know, kind of like space operas, you know, where you're on spaceships and things like that. And, you know, uh, they, uh, and, and so each genre, I think, has its own defined area in which readers expect to be entertained. Huh? And I think the worst mistake, and I've made this mistake, I'll have to admit, I think the worst mistake a writer can make is to not know who their audience is. Mm -hmm and to publish a book which they promote in a genre which really doesn't fit in that category mm -hmm. and there's not a faster turnoff for readers than writing a book and promoting it particularly in a genre that it does not belong so you have to know your audience and their expectations and and again entertainment is what they're looking for but you got to give them the entertain kind of entertainment that they want. And I, I, again, I've made that mistake. It was one of the first mistakes I made as an, as a young, as a, as an early writer is in my head, I thought I knew what the genre was CJ, mm -hmm. but I didn't know enough about the writing craft or even genres in general 
to know that they're not all lumped in the same category. They actually do have well-defined um, uh, parameters that the readers expect. Mm -hmm. uh, George points out they must have a villain. You know, you have to have that good versus evil sort of deal going on. You have to have some sort of a conflict, whether yeah. it's a human villain or whether it's a situational villain. Uh, you could almost inter interchange, entertain for escape. You know, a lot of times, yeah. my second one, they want to imagine themselves as a stronger or braver or more talented than, than they had occasion to be in the non-fictional world. They want to solve the puzzle, expose the murderer, be the femme yeah. fatale, right. and fall in love with, that I'll fall in love with. And we've yeah. all got those characters. Years ago, uh, one of the writers' conferences I went to, I've mentioned this before, but it, it still sticks in my mind. There was a writer from the Houston area who wrote steamy romance, mm -hmm. okay, and um, and her hook was it was a, in a particular you know obviously romance, but it had to do with a profession like you know firefighters or uh, you know cops or something like that. But what she said was it's always stuck with me is you know don't hold yourself back when you're when you're writing. Uh, in terms of what you're giving the reader, because they are looking to escape. Mm -hmm. that's, what they're, that's what they want to do. They're looking to escape. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to, uh, to go too far in terms of the, how you write it, in, in immersing the reader into whatever story or world that you have them in, because in that blurb that we've seen, you know, a lot, oftentimes the reader's putting themselves into that world, okay? They're, and they're imagining themselves in those situations. And that in def is the, you know, it's a classic definition of escapism, projecting okay. yourself into a situation. Well, I know that when I write, I kind of write it as if I'm watching a movie. Mm -hmm. and so it has to have the action, it has to have the adventure, it has to, you know, those are all elements that are in all of them. There's a little bit of romance, there's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So there's all sorts of spices, I guess mm -hmm. we could say, of story elements that are kind of mixed in an entire thing that create a whole world. Our world is not two-dimensional, you know, so our stories sh should not be two-dimensional. They should be bold they should be bigger than life they should be you know but have some realism to them some base of realism so that when they do get lost in it it makes sense in the minds of the readers sometimes i've read some stories where they get so outlandish i'm like no that's even a little too far for me <laughs> you kind of gotta make sure that yeah while you're entertaining you kind of keep that element of realism within it as well because otherwise you will lose your reader. It'd be very it, it has to make sense. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It has to make sense. I mean, yeah, you're right. Um, I think too that when the the movie analogy that you made was was excellent because that's kind of the way I write. It's like, you know, the the film's unspooling in your mind and you're writing what you're seeing as if it was on a movie screen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an excellent analogy of of, of how to write in a way that readers can immediately, you know, relate to because they're seeing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge, don't you think, CJ, is a lot, a lot of times in your head, you know what the story is, but getting it on paper in a way that you can present it to the readers the same way that it's unspooling in your mind mm -hmm. uh, is not always, well, it's not, it, it isn't easy, at least not for me. Right. And, and there's the elements of, you know, the five senses that helps immerse a reader, you know, make sure to hit all the five senses as you're setting up a scene. Now don't just use them as check marks, kind of let them flow through the scene. So it becomes, it's a natural and how they do it. Um, when you're writing the story, make sure that there's a sense flow to it. Do the whole show. Don't tell. You're showing them like the movie. You're showing them what's going on. You're not telling them what to feel. You're not telling them what to see. You're showing them what the characters are seeing and what they're doing. And it's up to them to make that movie flip in their head. 
we could have a we could probably talk on a number of different book world episodes if we wanted to about how much description is too much or how much is too little but if you but if you have to err err on the side of too much because again as you say you're telling the story you're showing you're showing the story not telling it and and showing takes more verbiage than telling well, and once you have that scene in there, when they go back to wherever they're going, the reader's already got it in their head because they've got all five senses. Say it's a fire station. You're going to have probably cement brick walls. So they're going to run their fingers along the wall. You're going to have like a showcase with different articles and trophies and stuff like that. Because I'm sure there's competitions between the firehouses. You're going to have that smell, that that slight fire smell through everything that's going to be in there. There's going to be chemical smells. There's um, going to be a workout room. So you know what that smells like, you know, there's all sorts of different things that you're going to smell and that you're going to see, but you only have to do it once if you set it up right. Exactly. And, and again, the, the, mis when I was uh, start first starting out writing, the big, biggest mistake I made was not knowing my audience mm -hmm. and, and, who I was writing for and who would read my books. Another mistake, I think, when we're talking about entertaining as part of the role of an author in writing their books for readers, to entertain the readers, is promoting personal or political points of view mm -hmm. that are completely extraneous to the story and basically are just being put in there because they represent the author's political or personal points of view. Now, if they have something to do with the story, obviously that's not, I mean, you know, you, you do, you would include those, but I've read, and I think we all have, <clears throat> in fact, I'm reading a book now where uh, the author is not shy in promoting a uh, political viewpoint, which I may or may not agree with because I think that's beside the point. What is the point is that's not part of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's being put in there, and that and it becomes extraneous. And matter of fact, what it does it distracts from the story. Now, what a lot of readers will do, and again, I've talked with others. People, you know, we've both been doing this long enough. You, you know, you know what I'm talking about. It, it, it's that a lot of times readers just put the book, book aside. I'm just not going to read that anymore. Okay, I just because even though it may be a great story, you have actually burned your audience by putting things in there, which whether you knowingly or, know, or unknowingly uh, meant to do, you have offended them uh, or you've made it so that it's not, re that it's unreadable as far as they're concerned. And uh, again, if it's related to the story, mm -hmm. fine. I mean, there's political thrillers. We, you know, there's, there is points of view that are part of a, book and an author that people are familiar with and that's why they read that that or follow that author's books but a lot of times i think we throw those things in there uh author i, I say we i think i'm a big mistake that an author who is trying to entertain is distracting from the entertainment again by interjecting their own political or personal points of view that may or may not mesh with the readers who are reading their story. And why, why even take that chance? Why even, why even offend, take the, uh, the chance of offending your readers when the content has nothing to do with the story? Mm -hmm. I mean, if it fits in the story, it fits in the story. And us as authors, we bleed into our story anyway. So things are going to show up don't force it, let it flow. Uh, that's the whole theory of the tears from the writer, tears from the reader, laughter from the writer, laughter from the reader. You're not going to have that and you're not going to hit their emotional core if you're trying to push this agenda forward, whatever it may be. Well, as indie authors, what's our biggest struggle? Finding readers, mm -hmm. okay? getting people who will follow us and, you know, and buy the books we not only have currently written, but the ones that will come. So the last thing we want to do is to shrink our audience by offending them, mm -hmm. um, either on purpose or unintentionally. Uh, and to me, that's just a common sense thing. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
I don't know another way to put it. It's just common sense. Yeah. Just, I mean, don't push it. It's to entertain. If you want to write a nonfiction book, then write a nonfiction book. Exactly. Don't put it in and entertain it and label it entertaining. There are many exam examples of entertaining, AKA escape. Um, there's poems, there's novels, novellas, there's short stories, there's plays, also called skits or sketches. Uh, there's musicals, there's fairy tales, there's fables. There's, you know, all sorts of ways to express, you know, entertainment, you know, and to help somebody get lost in it. It's kind of like when we're watching like an award show and we're watching it to entertain and to see who got the awards for, you know, best actor or whatever. And next thing you know, we're listening to a political speech. <laughs> Chances are it's going to get shut off. Yeah. It's yeah. don't use this platform to promote your agenda. Put it in a nonfiction book so they know what they're picking up. Don't try to sneak it in. They'll catch it. I, I j again, I don't know of a faster way to um, offend readers than to put in content that they may or may not agree with. Mm -hmm. um, that has nothing to do with the story. Again, I want to stress that if it has nothing to do with the story, and it's just being thrown in there as ex like you know as extraneous material, then um, I just don't think that's a smart way to write. And I think that I don't know many. If you're a best-selling author, mm -hmm. you're already well known and famous. You can get away with that. But our audience, you know, well, you still may lose them. to a certain extent you can. But our audience is basically independent authors or indie authors, people who want to write or are, 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 are um, they want to learn how to write and, and publish books. You know, when you're on that first level, when you're just starting out, again, you don't want to offend people. And, you, and, the, and the assumptions made about, well, everybody thinks the way I do. Well, yeah. no, uh, that's, that's the worst assumption of all you can make because the United States, what have we got? 320, 330 million people, you know, 7 billion people in the world today. Trust me, there are a divergent, there are many divergent viewpoints on lots of different things. And if, as the topic of today's subject is, it is to entertain, mm -hmm. decide that. Is it going to be to entertain or is it going to be to lecture? I mean, yeah. think about it. When you're watching a show and it starts to get political or tries to push agendas and viewpoints regarding politics, how quickly does it tank? Even if it's a really good show, that's a really good way to kill a show. It's the same with books. It's a really good way to kill books. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. And again, um, decide, are you, do you want to be a, a successful author? Well, when you get when you get to the point where you're a bestseller, and you can get away with that kind of stuff, I mean, the world's your oyster. Do whatever you feel compelled to, to do, but but not you, in this category. No, um, I know on January 24th we're going to be talking about the writer's purpose is to persuade. That is in fiction and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. That's where that goes. Nonfiction. You're right. No, it's there is some in fiction and some yeah. in nonfiction, yeah. but. That's where that goes. But that is not, that's, you're right. That's not the category of entertain. Mm -mm. You know? No, if, and, and when you're writing your stories, you know, like I said before, part of you are going to bleed into them. Part of, as an author, you bleed into your stories. Part of you is, at least part of me, part of me is in every single one of my stories. I'm not going to tell you which parts, but part of me is in every one of my stories. And in doing so, part of my view of the world is going to show just like with yours, part of your view of the world is going to show, but that's what gives each of us our different styles. You know, that's so a good point. just that like good different point. radio stations for, you know, there's different radio stations for everybody and everybody's going to like every single radio station. So not everybody's going to like me, not everybody's going to like you, but there are those who do like you, who do like your writing style. And those are the ones that you're writing for. I think the overriding thing, you know, when I, when I was thinking about our topic today about entertaining, um, that just keeps coming back to mind is people read fiction and we're talking about, and when we're talking about all the genres from romance on down, okay, science fiction, fantasy, whatever, people read 
because they want to escape this world mm -hmm. and be transported to another world. And the better an author can do that, the better that they can transport the reader to a world that the reader can immerse themselves in, the more successful they will be and the more books they will sell. Definitely. And the more that they're going to write. I mean, when a person picks up a book, I know as a reader, because I would say 99.9% .9 of us are readers first as authors. Mm -hmm. uh, our style has been picked up. It comes as a culmination of all the different people that we read. Right. And, yeah. you know, as we do that, we've learned different techniques and stuff from different authors. And so our style is going to be different from even the one person uh, who maybe is our favorite author. It's all going to be different because we're all different. And you're, you're right. I mean, I don't know of a single author that wasn't an avid reader first. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you, and you, you have, you like certain authors, you know, like what you're saying there, you like certain authors, you like certain styles, you like certain stories, you like certain genres. That's what colors an author's writing is those experiences. Mm -hmm. And and I have to say that true, you know, our own personal experiences, you know, growing up and through life, they tend to color the way we write as well. And, and there, there's no way to, to escape that. And that's not what I'm saying when I say don't interject personal or political viewpoints. I'm saying, no, you know, if don't let that be the driver behind the story, because again, people want to be entertained. They want to escape this world that that kind of stuff drags them back into. I mean, maybe expose them into a world that, that they've never, they've been interested in, but they've never tiptoed in, <laughs> you know, add that little bit of element to it. And, right. you know, and then there are some who that is their world and they're going to want to see some of the real stuff and say, okay, is this realistic? So for example, some of my books, my husband is my military advisor. He's also my medical advisor. I mean, who gets to ask their husband, hey, where can you get shot and not die? <laughs> or where can you get shot, but you've got about five to 10 minutes before you die? You know, <laughs> not everybody has that option, but there are, uh, there are people in those different positions that you can go and you can ask and you can get that element of realism within, you know, the storyline that you're wanting to write. Talk to them. There's so many different ways you can go, you know, drama, mm -hmm. uh, love versus hate, you know, uh, uh, as George mentioned, you know, evil villains versus the good guys, mm -hmm. you know, those are all just wonderful parts of entertaining and escaping into a good read, a good book. And, uh, and the good authors know how to, how to uh, tag into that. And, and it shows up in their writing and, um, and so I think the entertainment part of, of all the aspects, all the elements we talk about writing, when we're, when we're specifically talking about fiction, I think that is the most important element is to entertain. Well, it's kind of like the title of our podcast, Book World, The Great Escape. You know? Yeah. That's what, you know, as a fiction writer, that's generally what you're writing for. Exactly. Escape exactly. wherever they are. I know when I first started writing, not publishing, when I first started writing, because there's, a, I have a lot of books I have already written that I haven't published. But when I first started writing, I wrote it as an escape from myself. <laughs> you and know, so, that is an excellent point, CJ. Mm -hmm. I bet you many authors would agree with that in terms of how they started out as well. I, you need to, uh, that needs to be a tagline or someone somewhere, because I think that's pretty insightful. I mean, it really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, or fortunately we're out of time, um, but just fiction authors, just consider our points and, you know, we'll check it out. But next week, remember that we're moving to 4 p.m. Central time. We're going to be talking about the writer's purpose to inform. So as you can guess, that one's going to be nonfiction. Um, so we'll catch you guys next week. Same place, same day, different time. We'll catch you guys at four o'clock, 4 p.m. Central time. We'll talk to you then. Bye.